Well, in this last little section here on um, chapter section on relations, uh, we get into uh, defining and recognizing uh, independent and dependent variables. And we're going to take a look at a couple of examples of that uh, to recognize the uh, independent and dependent variable. But before we begin, uh, let's kind of get our definitions here together. It says, in a relation, the value of the variable that determines the output is called the independent variable. So, if that value of that independent variable changes, that's going to make, that's going to cause the uh, dependent variable, the output, to change. So the variable with a value that is dependent on the value of the independent variable is the dependent variable. In other words, it is the output. We have an input value, that's the independent variable. We have an output variable, that's the dependent variable. Now, continuing on, the domain contains the values of the independent variable, or we might call these most typically x values, the value of x. Uh, and then lastly, the range this is where uh, the coordinate would be on the y-axis, contains the values of the dependent variable, or we might call that the y-values. So the domain, the independent variable, is going to be the x-value in an equation. The range, the dependent value, is going to be the y-value. Okay, so here we got some uh, sentences here. We're going to be looking at finding the independent and the dependent variables. Let's read this first one. The air pressure inside a tire increases with temperature. Okay, so what causes the air pressure inside a, a tire to increase? Well, we're told it is the temperature. So if that temperature changes, the air pressure inside the tire is going to change. The temperature being the independent variable and the air pressure being the dependent variable. Okay, get it? When the temperature changes, the air pressure is going to change. Let's look at the next one. As the amount of rain decreases, so does the water level of the river. As the amount of the rain decreases, so does the water level of the river. Well, what's going to cause the water level of the river to change? And it's going to be the amount of rain. So the amount of rain, in this case, is the independent variable. The water level of the river is the dependent variable. The input is the amount of rain. The output is the water level of the river. Independent and dependent variables. Now let's take a look at a couple of uh, verbal sentences and see if we can pick out from this what the uh, independent variable is going to be and what the dependent variable is going to be or what the x value is going to be, the y value, the domain, the range, the input, output. Uh, so these are the things we're thinking about. Let's read this first one. Julian is buying concert tickets for himself and his friends. The more tickets he buys, the greater the cost. Now, we're asked to define, find the independent and the dependent variables. Well, the total cost of the tickets is going to depend, dependent variable, the, the total cost of the tickets is going to depend on how many tickets he buys. And so in this example, the independent variable, I'm just going to say independent, is the number of tickets.
and the dependent variable is the total cost of the tickets. So, for instance, if the tickets cost $10 a piece, well, his total cost, if he buys one ticket, is going to be $10. But if he buys two tickets, independent variable, the input, buys two tickets, well, his total cost then is going to be $20. Let's look at another one here. The faster you drive your car, the longer it will take to stop. So now what would be the independent variable? What would be the factor that could change that would then cause a change in how long it takes to stop? Well, the faster you drive your car is going to be the independent variable. And the time it takes to stop is going to be the dependent variable. Faster I drive my car, the longer it's going to take to stop. Driver's ed question, right?